I'm Alicia, your prop money millionaire, cash stuffing, budgeting teacher, single mom of three. It's time again to these hands. These hands and bands. Hey friends, welcome back to Hands and Bands. I'm Alicia, your prop money millionaire, and I'm just here to let you know that. <laughs> that I'm still enjoying my toy. No, <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't think that was gonna pop out like that. <laughs> um, thank you again. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe. Thank you again. <laughs> yes, I would have that on a wish list. And yes, someone, someone importante, <laughs> someone named Free would buy this. <laughs> okay, so. I want to talk to you today about prop moneying it, about being a prop money millionaire, about this whole budgeting thing. And I don't want to bore you with the, here's how to do these steps. And believe me, I needed those. When I first started, I, I, I was searching the internet, searching YouTube to find those step-by-step -step videos. Uh, I feel like there are a lot of them now, and they do such a good job explaining just in general, like this whole entire um, community and what we're doing and how cash stuffing works but we're not cash stuffers <clears throat> we're prop money millionaires over here so I want to get in and really dive into how to be a prop money millionaire the steps I took um, and just how I kind of go about this whole lifestyle but it's a lot and I don't want to just be like, yep, 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 yep. So I'm going to do it in sections. And today I just want to talk about tracking. And I know you're going to be like, oh, I know how to track. But do you? But do we? But, you know, I don't know. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. First, let's get into our affirmation. Affirminators, unite! Okay. Let's go to the top this time. we got to be at the bottom a little bit. Start from the bottom. Now we're here. Okay, I'm going to do this one right here. Possibility. Is that one? It is. Hear ye, hear ye. I hereby unclench my grip on all the old thought patterns that are getting in my way. I surrender any ideas that make me feel like a victim of circumstance or make my ideal relationship, job, whatever, seem like an impossibility. I am now the mayor of reinvention and issue the following decree. Limiting beliefs about myself and my life are henceforth, forthwith, officially, and undubitably declared for the birds. <laughs> henceforth, everything is possible. From this point forward, you're no longer going to restrict yourself. Anything is possible. Everything is possible. Anything is imaginable. So everything is a possibility, which becomes a reality. Yes, from this point forward, Everything is possible. From this point forward, nothing is too far out of my reach. Okay, this reminds me. It's not about me. I have a friend who is job searching. And I hope they're watching this video. I really, really do. And I've been saying it multiple times. Sometimes we don't hear everything people are saying to us. But I feel like if I keep saying it, they'll hear it. <laughs> In your pursuit for employment, right? You, we all do the motions. We go through, we read um, the different job requirements, the job duties and descriptions, you know, the ideal candidate, if they have that synopsis there. And you realize, or not realize, you tell yourself, ah, I just don't have those qualifications. I don't meet all of those little check boxes. But guess what? Neither do the other person. And they applied and they got the interview because not many did. And they interviewed great and they got the job. So I'm not saying go and apply for jobs that you don't qualify for. It's like, I'm going to go run a Fortune 500 company and I've never even done anything with business. I mean, but you know what I'm saying? If there's like one or two things that are on that list that you don't necessarily meet, that doesn't mean you can't still apply and learn. And you could even, some of those things you can learn before you even get to the job interview. Some things are just things you need to just go and read about. And you know that once you have that job and that role, and a lot of times all those things they list aren't even things you be doing. Let's be real, people. Let's be real. But I just want to tell you, with this, 
the possibility of that new venture, the possibility of that new life you could have for yourself. The possibility is there because it is a possibility. It is going to be your reality if you allow yourself the space to just be. That's the end of the video. Have a great day. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Prop money. Okay. And I've been I've been going around this in my mind. I've been writing notes. I've been trying to like kind of make an outline. And I wasn't really sure how to tackle all of this. This is why I kept pushing it back and pushing it back. These videos of like the how-tos to being a prop money millionaire. The how-tos to, to being a cashless budgeter. How do you maintain, Alicia, um, your finances and staying debt free and all of this without actually having cash. It, it goes against everything that's been taught to us. It goes against what the norm is or what the, um, you know, what the, the cash envelope system is, you know, designed to be cash envelopes. I understand. I get it. I know. So let me start with this one. I've never been a person to carry cash. So that in itself was easy for me to redesign all of this to fit my life. Now, if you're the same or if you just don't want to have cash on hand or in-house, these steps and these tools can help you. Even if you do carry cash, a lot of what I'm saying will still apply to whatever you have chosen to do to help you and your family or yourself um, get out of debt, stay out of debt, build, etc. Right? Okay. So before I even started actually getting prop money. Prop money was down the road, right? We didn't start with prop money. What we started with was a spreadsheet. And my spreadsheet that I created helped me to not only track all of my purchases, but it also helped me to really start looking at my bills and accessing how much money I would have free after my bills are paid it helped me to see it visually the spreadsheet i created is a forever freebie if you didn't know it's on my website it's been there it'll stay there it it allows you to have a full year and putting in your your items that you um like your bills and expenses and then tracking everything and then it, it builds off from one month to the next and automatically updates it's 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 a spreadsheet it's an equation right so that helped me because I was all about just digital tracking at that point. I wasn't writing anything down. I was a digital tracker. I wanted to go in and, and type the things in and see it. And then I could instantly see how much was left and I could compare it right to my, my bank account. So at that time I still had one large bank account with all my money in it, right? So first step was tracking. Now, if you don't want to be a digital tracker, tracker person, you can still write everything out. So <clears throat> you'll get your, um, whatever you're using, your budget binder, a piece of paper, whatever. But you have to have something that shows you what you're spending, where your money is, etc. So if you are, one, if you're paying bills, um, reoccurring debt, whatever, make sure you're writing that out. <clears throat> Excuse me, you're planning for those expenses. And then you're seeing what you have remaining. These are those like basics for everybody. You see what you have remaining. Now you're doing your necessities. What am I after my bills? Now I have to I have to have gas and food and you know, I've got to have whatever other expenses you have that are are may, maybe not necessarily bills, but they they are things you are, you know, require to have their their needs um they make, maybe you can fluctuate a little bit with them right like okay groceries i know that i need to eat but maybe i can budget a little bit less and try to do these things with my money and, and coupon or whatnot okay then you have whatever is left after that and that's the money that we're putting into these savings challenges your sinking funds these are the, the little bits that you're saving up for whatever you're trying to do if it's paying off debt if it's buying a large purchase if it's um, buying a home if it's saving for retirement whatever that's what that money um, comes into play or how it comes into play all right so we all know those steps 
and we, we've seen the tracker, but then I, okay, so then I was like, well, I want to be like everybody else, right? I want to track my money, like, you know, these categories, because I really, I really was drawn to the categories. Those, I think, because of my type of personality and the fact that I am a visual learner, it was perfect for me. I can see the structure. This is what I have to spend for clothing. This is what I have to spend for, you know, going out to eat, whatever. And I could see it and I know how much I have in there and it was perfect except I didn't carry cash. So how was I going to see all of this as I'm doing it? How am I going to track and, and, and just monitor all of this? Yeah, I have my spreadsheet at home, but I can't spread it around with me. So I ended up and I found this. Look how old this is. This is from, I think this is like two years ago. Two years ago? Last year? I don't even know. But this is what I use. Yeah, I think so. Okay, <laughs> this is what I used to track all my spending. So... This is actually the second version. I couldn't find the first version. The first version I made was, um, it looked like this was a lot skinnier and it had like a little, it was laminated and had like a little envelope in the back, right? So it was like a laminated envelope and I tracked my expenses on the front of the envelope just like this. I would write down whatever I bought right then. I mean, literally. Um, let me say this. Tracking, budgeting, all of this, it's, it's just like for me, finding a new recipe, right? You find a new recipe, you want to make an apple pie. I'm just throwing that out there, whatever just came to my head. Maybe I want apple pie, I don't know, I love an apple pie. Okay, so maybe you want to make an apple pie. You never made one before. So you start like from the basics. You go find the best recipe for your crust. You're looking at what kind of apples work best. You're looking at temperature for your oven. Um, you know, we're looking at, <laughs> you know, we're looking I don't know, you're looking at everything, right? You're like, okay, I need to find out um, altitude, everything, because you're like, I don't know, I need to figure it all out because I'm gonna make sure that my pie is gonna be the best pie and I need to know exactly how to make it perfectly. And you follow the recipe to the T, right? And you mean you step by step and you have the book out, you're looking at it. That's the beginner budgeter, right? The beginner budgeter is doing every single step, is following everything to a T, is following and writing everything down. Um, and has to be very meticulous because you're not used to the steps yet. And so you can't just skip to rolling out my own crust. I know how to do this. I know what, you know, no, you can't guess those things. So you're, you're step by step. After you've made this pie, you know, 20 times, now you're, you know, you're, you're good at this. You're getting better, but you're still pulling that book out just to double check some things. You know, then you advance and we all know how that goes. Next thing you know, you're just making the pie, talking to your friends, watching a movie, don't even realize what you're doing, making the best pies. Everyone wants you to bring the pie to the potluck or to the Christmas party, whatever the case may be, because you've excelled at learning those steps and made them such um, a repetitive process and part of your memory. You don't longer need to look at the recipe. Same thing here. So as I'm writing out my my expenses or not expenses, my, my purchases, um, I I get better and better at not having to like immediately write them out. But I didn't start that way. I had to, as I'm out there in the world, I had an envelope, right? And I didn't have as many envelopes as I have now. Okay, I had like four or five. It was like major categories, like family, you know, and and I think it was like house, gas. I don't know, it was very, very generic um, categories. These are just ideas. I'm telling you what I did so you can take from it and maybe you're like, oh, I wanna try that or that didn't work for me, but let me try it this way. This is what I'm giving you, those tips and those clues to help you formulate your own way to budget. So I would um, write out whatever I spent. Like here, it says I went to Harkins, spent $39. I know how much I had in there, so then I was left with 21. And at that time, um, the first items or the first versions of these had the envelope. The envelope was for my receipts. So even if I couldn't write at that moment, I stuck the receipt in. If I did, even if I, if I did, I stuck, the, I stuck the receipt in. So I literally could scan the receipts or I would have something to go back and make sure I adjust it correctly. So that's how I started off with those envelopes. And then after a while, the receipts got too thick and I just didn't need to have all that, like little by little, I started using just the sheets, just the sheets with me and writing them in. Um, and I would write down, every time I went with somewhere, I hop $38 and I would, and then I'm the negatives, right? Cause I didn't have a bunch of excess money. I didn't have anything. Um, I didn't have it so categorized as I do now. And then I had a bunch of lump sums still in my major account. Like I had one main account and I was like, I don't even use all the money that I had left. I haven't really budgeted it out. I was more like just kind of throwing a little bit and seeing how it worked. Cause I didn't know how much I was spending. That's what you have to figure out. How much am I really spending in these categories? 
and you'll learn as you go on how much to budget for that category. For instance, family. Like I know that I need at least, at the very least, 50 bucks a month in family because we do pizza night on Fridays. Um, and my kids are small and only really two of them eat pizza. I can get a large pizza for like 10 bucks, right? So um, I know I need to at least have at least that amount just for family pizza night. And they have other things that you do and you can kind of realize how much you need in there um, just to kind of keep you at a, a nice amount. That's why it's really important for you to track what you're spending your money on, even before you start budgeting and tracking your expenses as you're like writing them out. Like, oh, so I purchased, my purchase, my purchase, my purchase. Before you get there, just spend like two weeks. Take two weeks and just write everything you purchased down and look at how they, how they kind of organize themselves. What categories do you really dip into? Um, and that'll kind of help you gather what envelopes you need, etc. Okay, so we started with the envelopes, then we went to the sheets, um, and we had the, the the spreadsheet was always there in the background. No matter what I was doing here, I kept that Excel spreadsheet for a very long time. I no longer use it now, um, but I kept it for a very long time because it was like my double checker, right? Again, it's my it's my it's my cookbook. Hey, <laughs> it's my cookbook, so I had to keep that around for a while. Then, as I got even more advanced, I started using like a budget book, so I was really breaking it down. And then, then I said, okay, I have all this money in my account, but how do I really know or remember if I transferred it out, how much is really there, if the bills come out? It was, that's the part I think a lot of you want to know. And that's the part that gets kind of confusing if you don't have a plan in place. Capital One, I know does the, the buckets and Navy does, Navy Federal Credit Union does the share savings. Some other ones out there, I maybe, I don't know. Those are the ones I know exist. And they are the ones that I um, have seen in use, either by myself or someone else. So, when it comes to my bank account and I'm tracking money, how can I track it and my actual, like, accounts, right? So, and I know I said this a lot of times to other people or I've said a lot of times to, um, in my videos, but... In your, in your accounts, you can have all of your money in like one account and then you're tracking and keeping your cash on hand, right? I see some people do that. I've seen some people, um, they, they, they will cycle out the same cash. So maybe they have like a thousand dollars in their house and you'll see that same thousand kind of replay over and over because as they're, as they're using it, out in public, they're not really using that cash you see in their binders. They're using a card and then they're coming home and then paying it back, but they're they're taking it out, but they're not taking everything that money to the bank. So let me give you an example. I don't think people realize this. And if you listen to some people's videos, you really watch them, they tell you what they're doing. So I know this exists. I wouldn't have known otherwise. So say I have um was $125, right? And family. Okay. And I go out one day and I I spend some money, I come back and I'm like, oh, okay guys, I spent $50 today, I'm gonna take that money out and I put it to the side. Well, they, they've done that for the week, a couple of times, right? And next thing you know, they come back to their video and they have like $15 left. But they never, they never went to the bank with this money. They used the cash that was in their accounts because they got paid, right? They got paid $110. And they used that 100 or whatever, 210. They use that money to pay off what they have pulled out. And the rest of that money, they still had on hand. They didn't have to go to the bank. Why go pull money out of the bank that I have right here in my hand? And so you're just seeing that same cycle of the same cash. Not all the time. Not everybody does it that way. Um, but it just makes sense. It's nothing. It's not anyone scamming or scheming. I just want to make sure I'm clear about that. It's not a negative thing. It's just what makes sense. Um, so if I already have this money on hand, instead of going to the bank and pulling it out, I'll just keep this money I have on hand and use the money in the bank to pay off that card. Now I don't have to go to, another, to the bank for another trip. And so I think it's funny how some people, I do think this is funny though. People will really go after people who use prop money. And I'm like, well, you realize people are also cycling the same cash. It's not that much different. <laughs> They're just not using prop money to represent what's in their hands. But hey, another day, right? It's another conversation. So. What I did was I 
found that my Navy Federal Credit Union allowed me to have as many share savings accounts as I wanted. So there's small accounts, they're, they're savings accounts, um, they're called share savings, and I'm allowed to name them and have as many as I want. Now, at the beginning, these people were like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> I got so many calls and messages and things because they're at the branch were like, you're opening a lot of accounts. I'm like, well, can I not? And that was my le legit. Am I doing something wrong? Can I not open these accounts? And they're like, well, no. I was like, well, this is what I'm doing. I explained to the person, the lady that called me, this is what I'm doing. Um, and I explained to her what I was doing. And this is why I'm opening so many different accounts. And I'm going to open a few more. So can you stop calling me? <laughs> so after a while, they stopped. But um, I literally have every single envelope you see in my, let me grab one. And these envelopes and these binders has their own share savings account. I have one that says travel, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to put um, a screenshot so you can see it. I'll blur out my little numbers so you don't see my account numbers, obviously. But um, each one has its own, except for HSA, that has its own HSA um, account. And so then whatever I have in here is reflected there once I've dated my, my tracking. And that allowed me to not have just one giant account. So... When I get paid, my checks come in to one checking account, to one account. That account does not have a debit card attached to it intentionally because that's where the majority of my money is housed um, for a significant part because I'm, I'm a month ahead. So all my checks just sit there until I'm ready to disperse them. So I don't want me to be able to lose a debit card that's attached to that account. Just so you're aware, just so you know, you can do that too. You don't have to have a debit card for an account. That account has never had and will never have a debit card as long as I can keep it that way. So how do I transfer money and do things? It's all through my phone. It's all on, you know, I can go inside of a, of a branch or I can go, um, you know, my app. And so once I sit down and, and do my budget for the month, so all of February's checks are in, I sit down and do my March budget and I look and I say, okay, this is how much money I have for this month. I pay, once I pay off the bills, this is what I have in excess. I have another checking account that I transfer just for my cash envelopes. So everything in, in this binder goes to one specific account. Wash into everything. My money has its own account. But, uh, and so it's both for cash rewards. So groceries, family, home in need, not Carl gas and allowance those all are in one account because those are the ones that i'm constantly pulling into like weekly right so those have one account that i just do the whole lump sum and i don't have to transfer it after that i don't transfer it around once i do it for the month i know what's in there i represent what the amounts we put in here then i have the share savings for everything else so once i'm doing the other amounts i know what's left and i budget out i I leave the, the giant amount in my checking account. So when you guys see me do my budgets and I tell you, okay, this month I have 300 weekly to put into savings challenges, that's the money that I leave in my main account until I'm ready to do those savings challenges. And that transfer, because, let me tell you why I wait, I don't know where I'm putting that money yet, right? I don't know which, which envelope is going to get what yet. I don't budget that far out like that. So... I know that I'm going to do $300 into these accounts at some point, so I leave it there. And then when I do that video with you, I go in and I go ahead and transfer that money into those accounts. And this is a lot of information. I didn't really want to just be talky-talky, but <laughs> I didn't want to get this out. Okay, so my, my, my big takeaway from this video is, one, you have to see where your money is going. You have to track. Um, it's, it's some... It's, somehow if it's your digital tracking if it's by paper if it's these little things um now i don't do it this way now i can go straight into i i shop for the day i have my receipts i go into my book and you guys know how i run this have you seen it i track in this i, I literally color you know i color code a few of the items but i put in my little stickers and i track what i'm spending um, so that when I do my videos, it's easier to run through. And that's the main reason I switched to this because I do videos. Um, but I also like seeing the visual this way as well. 
Um, so this was back in January. So this is how I track it now. And then as far as organizing my money, I organize it in share savings accounts and I transfer it into its individual account. And then it, I literally put that money into that little big account and when I've used it, so if I say, okay, you know, I spent, um, and there's that one where I spent, okay, I spent $45 out of Shop Small, then I go in there, I take $45 out and I, I transfer back to the credit card. It's all, all linked, it's easy transfer back and forth. And tell me what questions you have. I don't even know what you guys want to know. I know I get a lot of questions about how I started, how this all came about. Um, and maybe once I get some, some feedback, I'll add more information. We can do another video in a couple of weeks. But for now, that's what I got. Um, that's how I started off. Um, and then the prop money just really just represents what's in those accounts. Just because I like to be able to count stuff and I think it's fun. That's why I use the prop money to represent what's in my account. It's not that exciting today, guys. I know. It's really real today, right? I feel like we're adults today. It's Wednesday adulting. Oh, Wednesday adulting. Okay, now it's not. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed this, whatever this was, our chat. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a great one. Bye. Boom!